All right, hopefully we're audible on there. Excellent. Excellent. So next we hear about geometry of the matching distance for 2D filtering functions. Francesca gives a talk. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so let me start with the, uh, thanking the organizer for giving me the opportunity to, um, to present this work. Uh, also, should acknowledge my uh, collaborators, Mark Etier, Patrizia Frosi, and Nicola Percioli, uh, whom I work uh, with uh, um, for this work. So uh, I'm going to talk about the matching distance uh, in the in uh, persistence theory, and uh, I'm going to stress the fact that here we're working with 2D filtering functions um, because uh, uh, the techniques that we're going to use are not going to be applicable in the discrete case. So this is really a work uh, tailored for um, the continuous uh, case of uh, persistence. So but let me, uh, let's start with uh, a <laughs> gentle, a very synthetic introduction to um, one parameter persistence for filtering functions. So let's say that you have a, a topological space, in this case, a curve, and we filter it by its height. So when we filter it by its height, we are going to start seeing sub-level sets of this curve as, as, as long as you, we move upward, right? So um, this filtration um, is associated to a uh, persistence diagram, in this case, a zero dimensional persistence diagram, who is going to tell us, okay, um, that there is a connected component that is born at uh, height A. In fact, this is the first time where we uh, see the curve. And then there's going to be another one born at B and that dies at D, which is corresponding to this point in the diagram. And then another connected component born at C that dies at D, corresponding to this point. So this is a little bit how, how it works uh, in the one parameter case, but we care about the two parameter case uh, today. So in, uh, it, let's say that now our uh, function filters a uh, topological space M, actually in this context is always going to be a small manifold, but uh, uh, it doesn't matter too much to go into the details now. And this function uh, takes values in R2. Well, then there is a method that is called uh, uh, a foliation method that associates to this uh, um, two parameters filtration, a collection, uh, collection of uh, one parameter filtration by um, slicing the um, image of this function. Basically, we take uh, parameter, yeah, parameter values in this uh, uh, strip, so in uh, in this uh, product of the open interval 0, 1 times R, R. and to each of these parameters, it is associated a uh, function uh, F star A. How does that work? So this is our parameter space, and to each point in there, we have a uh, associated a line with the um, positive, uh, with positive slope. So for example, to the point, to the orange point, A1B1, we have associated a filtering line RA1B1. How does the filtration work? So we filter now the, the, our manifold along this, uh, along this line in the following way. So if, if, uh, for every point on the line, we take the pre-image of whatever we see that is uh, below and on the left of the point. And as, uh, as soon as like we move uh, we, uh, upward, this point on the line, we have a nested collection of sub, uh, uh, subsets of the manifold. Uh, this, uh, uh, technique was uh, introduced in this paper. You can have a look at that if you like. There's all the all the details about how it's actually done. All right. Um, why why do we do that? Well, in the case of uh, um, uh, two parameter uh, uh, persistence, we don't really have 
a invariant like uh, persistence diagram that we did before, that, that we that we uh, defined not really defined but we saw an example before. But if we slice it, we have an infinite collection of one parameter uh, objects. So for that, we can associate persistence diagrams. So we are going to have basically a um, infinite collection of persistence diagrams associated to the function f. And that's useful also to uh, give a definition of the matching distance. So the um, matching distance between two filtering functions, f and g, or uh, between actually their uh, rank invariant, depending on how you want to see it, um, is going to be the supremum over all the parameter values in the strip that we've seen before of the bottleneck distance between the persistence diagram of the functions at the parameter values a, b. So um, a question that you might ask is then, how computationally feasible is this, since you just said that these uh, lines are infinitely many? Um, so we wonder at which filtering lines actually the matching distance is obtained. Uh, this is not uh, uh, a new problem. Some people, some other people have worked on that, and uh, there are several effective algorithms um, to to compute it. We 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 are not uh, today. I'm not presenting an algorithm. I'm just uh, uh, trying to um, to to tell you qualitatively what are actually the lines that contribute to this uh, to this uh, to this metric. So it's not a quantitative uh, analysis, more quantitative. All right, um, a little bit of uh, tools that we're going to need to, um, to study this problem. Uh, let's start with the extended Pareto grid of the function. I'm going to define it via example, let's say. So consider it is uh, um, uh, filtering th this function from the two sphere to R2 that projects the sphere uh, into the, its uh, x and z coordinates. And um, the extended Pareto grid of this, uh, of this function is, uh, um, look, looks like this, is a collection of half lines and arcs on, the, um, on, our, on our two, so on the image of the, of the function. Uh, more precisely, it is defined in the following way. So we take, uh, on the manifold, we define the Pareto set of the function. Um, this, this is the collection of the of points on the manifold in which the two the gradients of the two components of the function are opposite. Um, and then we take the image of the Pareto set via this uh, via this function f and take the union of vertical and horizontal half lines that are born on critical values critical values of the components of the function. So what's happening here, for example, is that we have uh, an arc like this, that is uh, an, Im an image of a, uh, an arc in the Pareto set of the function that we then project into our two. And then there is you know, these half lines that are born in the critical values of the two components, X and Z. Okay, so this is a little bit how, how this construction uh, works. Uh, what do we use it for? Ah, and it's called, yeah, this uh, gamma f, so the, what I've just described is called the um, Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm using this notation later, but let me introduce it anyway. We often refer to the half lines in this grid as improper contours whereas we refer to uh, the uh, red arcs as proper contours. Uh, it is also uh, important, but is uh, in the box of details that, uh, that, you can, that you can have a look if you're interested in, uh, in the paper, but the, the proper contours always look like this. So they are always increasing uh, on the x-axis and always decreasing on the y-axis, and this is an hypothesis uh, that we that we have to um, assume. 
it's not restrictive, but it's yeah. All right, what do we use it for? Uh, it turns out that this extended Pareto grid together with the filtering lines uh, uh, that we are considering gives us uh, um, persistence features of the function. Uh, in, in, in particular, um, the, uh, for a fixed a parameter value, a b, for every and, and taking the persistence diagram of the function associated to that a b, then for each coordinate of uh, the persistence diagram, there is an intersection point between the filtering line at that same point and the extended Pareto grid, and. Um, um, that gives us that, that, that coordinate in the persistence diagram. Uh, it's much easier to see with an example. So consider the extended Pareto grid uh, that, we've, uh, that we've seen before and uh, consider this filtering line, uh, this filtering line. Now, um, when we filter, when we filter this, uh, uh, the, the manifold, the, uh, along this line, we first, we see the first feature at this orange dot here, meaning that this is the first point where we, uh, if we take the pre-image, uh, the pre-image under the function, we see the, the, the first connected component of, uh, of, the, of the sphere. And this in fact corresponds to the first coordinate of the zeroth persistence diagram. Um, of the of the pers uh, of the function at that parameter value AB. Same thing for this uh, for this blue point. Here you have to imagine that you have uh, walked along this line uh, long enough so that if you take the wh whatever you see uh, down and below, uh, sorry, down and on the left of this point mm -hmm. is if you take the pre-image is going to be the entire sphere. So. That's what, uh, uh, where in fact the um, uh, two cycle uh, is going to be seen at first. So it's going to give us the first component of the persistence diagram um, in degree two. All right. Um, yeah, this is uh, this theorem, uh, you can find it in that paper by um, uh, Cherry Etienne Brosini. Um, oh, one, one more thing actually is that uh, this was proven for filtering lines uh, um, uh, uh, that were non-vertical and non-horizontal. However, this was uh, uh, extended by Eloy Mosi Garcia in his master thesis uh, <laughs> last summer. So now it works also for vertical and horizontal lines. All right, but let's go to the um, to our um, main theorem, which says that uh, the matching distance between any two functions f and g satisfying certain uh, certain hypothesis uh, <clears throat> is realized at a vertical, horizontal, or slope one line, or at a special value. So what I'm saying is that if we take the strip, the parameter, the space of parameter, um, we just uh, need, in order to actually compute the matching distance, we just need to look at this, uh, the parameter values on these red lines. And there's actually more, we, we, we can bound it from above and, and below. So we just need to look at the compact set because, uh, um, yeah, don't want to go too much into the details, but yeah, we can restrict to this uh, with this bound. And so this is one part of the theorem, but the other more mysterious part of the theorem is about the special values. And um, so what are, what are those? Those are values in the parameter space. Uh, so that, that are defined as follows. So AB is special if there are two pairs 
of contours in the union of the extended Pareto grid of the two functions that we are considering, uh, for which one of the two of these two um, uh, conditions applies. So what what's happening here? So we're saying that there are two pairs of contours for which their intersection with the filtering line R A B gives us two pairs of, of abscissas whose difference is equal or one is half of the other. These four parameter values with A is smaller than one half, so mm -hmm. with slope greater than one. Same thing for the ordinates in case the uh, slope is smaller than one. This is a, a bit strange definition maybe. So what in the picture, what I'm saying is that, so consider these two extended Pareto grid that comes from two functions on, uh, on S2, the orange one and the red one. Uh, I claim that the green and the blue line are um, associated to special values. And that's because, for example, the uh, green line has two points, two pairs of points, A1 and A2, B1 and B2, belonging, belonging to uh, four different contours. And if we take their um, differences among uh, between the abscissas of A1 and A2 and B1 and A2, and B2, they are equal. Which makes it a special value, which makes the line associated with a special value. I know that you're wondering that, that, that you are thinking that this is very artificial. Um, so why why does where does this definition come from? Um, it all lies uh, inside the, the proof of the theorem that I that I uh, um, stated before. Um, and in particular, it uh, it depends on um, on how the matching distance, what's the form of the matching distance. So uh, the matching distance between two functions can actually be uh, written in this in this way, where uh, we take a maximum over the parameter values of minimum over the matching between the diagrams, between the persistence diagrams, right? However, that cost, uh, the, that opt, optimal, um, the cost of the optimal matching is actually always of this form. So it's either a difference between abscissas of intersection between filtering line and the extended Pareto grid or half of that. This is a consequence of the position theorem that I told you before. So basically what we are doing is like, we, we, take, we, we find the optimal match in the extended Pareto grid and then we go back the, in, in the persistence diagram and then we go back to the extended Pareto grid and look at the, uh, the corresponding point in the grid, on the grid. So um, what, what, um, uh, what happens? So, so that this is uh, why, uh, where do this difference between abscissas or between ordinates that come from? Um, um, and this is used in the in the proof. So we, we have basically our aim was to show um, that the matching distance is always attained at lines of slope one or or horizontal or vertical. This is not true. There are counterexamples, by the way, um, not in this continuous case. In the discrete case, there is counterexample. So we wanted to show that, and uh, and since it was not true, then we found out that uh, mm, the obstruction for it to be true lies in these special values, and that's because. Uh, uh, when when trying to prove the result, we observed that we needed to move in the parameter space continuously while keeping track of the optimal matching. And this was not possible when finding some um, uh, some uh, values in which there were two possibility for the matching distance to be realized at basically. All right. Um, this uh, um, this is a little bit the idea. I hope I didn't confuse you too much. But um, 
the if you're interested in, in a little bit more details, uh, you can check out the paper. Um, but I would like to conclude uh, by um, saying that there is some open questions. We didn't figure out everything here. So uh, in particular, how does the special set look like? So the collection of special values. Um, it can be ugly, so it can be um, of measure greater than zero. So it might take uh, big patches in the parameter space. However, we think that this is not the case generically. So I, we think that actually uh, generically, so if we if this happens, if there are these bad patches in the parameter space, uh, then we can perturb a little bit the function and it becomes uh, a, a collection of uh, curves, also something of measure zero. So not too bad. And um, a next step would be also to try to take advantage of uh, of this result to um, to write an algorithm so to to see if, if it actually helps. Uh, so I mentioned some other uh, work, some other algorithms. Uh, here's a list. I'm sure it's not it's not uh, close to be complete. So if you're aware of anything to add, please let me know. And this concludes my talk. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. <laughs> A few minutes for questions. Yes. So uh, there you mentioned near the extended Pareto grid. So, so uh, like here or yeah, yeah, this one. Okay. So is JP is your Pareto grid or no? Or was no, that? is it this lives uh, in my manifold? Uh, what was then, this? Uh, is called the Pareto set of the function. Pareto set, okay. Yes, then to obtain the Pareto grid, you have to project this to take, to take uh, the image of the Pareto set via the function itself. Okay. So um, basically the extended Pareto grid always lives in R2. The manifold may live in it. Right, and F1 and F2 is your uh, filtration functions, right? Yeah, if, sorry, I didn't write actually. F1 and F2 are the two components of F. F, okay. Yes. The single height functions. Oh, yeah. Not the height function, just the two components of the, because that F may be as ugly as it wants. I mean, it's smooth, but not that ugly. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. But basically, if you want to see it on the sphere, you have to check where the gradient, how the gradient looks like. And in uh, if you, if you, Draw the sphere. Then there are two arcs in which uh, the two the two gradients look like this. Those are the points that I'm considering. Yes. So I think I see how the prop, when you cross the proper contour, you'll see like H zero. You see it first, and then you see H two because you see all of the sphere. Mm -hmm. uh, but I I don't understand the improper contours. How do they? Yeah. So uh, maybe here is better if I if I draw it, but. Uh, so, can I actually draw? Oh, maybe I can draw here. Yeah. So, let's say that uh, we have this extended body to grade, right? This comes from a sphere. Okay. When we cross up here, we are we have to take the down set that is like this. What we see then, if we take the pre-image, is basically the entire sphere. Uh, there is a there is also something happening. Uh, uh, something happening in other contours here. I didn't want to, um, to go too much into the details, but like, uh, for example, if you take the sub-level here, what you're going to see is basically this part of the sphere. So you're going to have to see one, one side, for example, that dies in here, where we see, um, uh, <clears throat> we see this basically. Sorry for my pictures, but yeah. 
this is what we see. So the cycle disappears there. And uh, yeah. Okay, very interesting. So it's it's you see critical points of index zero, one, one, two. Yeah. In this example. Okay, thank you. No questions? Yes. Yeah. That matches where you have not the same guys. Uh, where do they uh, you mean the in, in the in the parameter space? Yeah, yeah. so where the matching is realized, you have um, you can get some specific line for all the families of lines, like oh yeah, yeah. It, it can be uh, basically what what can happen is that so here this is our parameter space. It can happen that the they are either here, 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 or there might be, I don't know, there might, this might happen where there is an entire region in which uh, the oh. matching system might, might realize, might be realized. Those are very pathological cases, I think, where the functions are very super, super symmetric. It doesn't have a meaning, but you know what I mean. The, the, the two functions are, have very, uh, many yeah. symmetries, but then if you change it a little bit, then I uh, we we think that these patches disappear and and it looks like uh, more something like something like this. What is uh, the we hold um, the patches are you know, more than just here. Yeah. Oh, with this 